Blessed Friday to all my African kings and queens. Today we've got a lot to cover. And I want to visit a little bit on the circus and the drama that is happening in Parliament. I, a parliament is a soapy straight. In South Africa, there isn't a lack of entertainment when you watch our parliamentarians talking to each other. First, I want to speak about the president of the National Colored Congress, uh, Fidel Adams, uh, speaking so passionate about um, the unaliving of colored uh, boys. And um, one ANC member was laughing and it made him very angry. Also, I want to speak about what Brian Mulliver said about this um, accounting error that occurred in ESCOM of more than 8 billion rand. An accounting error of 8 billion rand. Overestimation of... Guys, stop playing with us. Julius Malema's children was attacked by... Um, a low life from the Democratic Alliance, I think is the Deputy Minister of Finance, uh, that small boy attacking, uh, bringing Julius Malema's children into parliamentarian discussions. What a low blow. Ah, these boys. And also Julius Malema was very angry to hear one of the DA members mentioning that the, we are all descendants of Jan van Riesbeck. Hi, guys. If that was not worse, Gaten McKenzie says that uh, the GNU is well intact and the Progressive Caucus must not attack uh, the GNU because they've got their own problems. Gaten McKenzie. Yeah. I also want to touch a little bit on what Fiki Lembalula said about Pravin Godan um, in terms of his legacy and what he leaves behind. I want to break down that a little bit more down today. And also, uh, Fiki Le spoke also about Dada Marero. This was, I think, last week or, or something like that. I could not record because I was not on YouTube. And um, uh, let's talk also about the, the discussions that the president is having on NHI. Uh, when is it going to be officially a law? You know, he signed that act, but uh, when is it going to be practicalized? Uh, for the lives of the African people. Also, Tlamulon Jela from the um, Konto is a political party, speaking about the abuse of drugs, especially in the Western Cape. It's nice to see that the MK is not considering the Western Cape as a DA party, but also is concerned about the lives of especially the colored people who are abusing drugs on a high rate, at the highest rate, more than any province in South Africa. Guys, let's talk about that and much more. Welcome to King Said So, Africa's one land, one language, one currency, one army on King Said So. Africans can unite your Pan-Africanist podcast. Enjoy. Black Heart, the hustle continuer. Made to inspire your goals and dreams. 100% good quality clothes are now available at affordable prices. T-shirts, hoodies, sweaters, bucket hats, and more. Place your orders now. 0684736908. Instagram Black 7576. Facebook page Black Heart. Peace in Pan-Africanism to all my African brothers and sisters from all around the world. Welcome back to King Said So. I'm your host, Kaki Sohongwane, Zinjiva Mwane Sono. And we're back at it again with another one. And this time around, and we've got a lot of footage uh, to cover, guys, especially there, what is happening in Parliament. Let's start quickly without any wasting of time or with... Um, Fidel Adams. I love Fidel. You guys know I love Fidel. I love his energy. Um, and I wish that um, colored people can gravitate a little bit more to him than um, that clown, Gaten McKenzie. I think he really, honestly, has got the colored people's interest in heart. Just listen to what he said. The colored people have faced a 400-year genocide since Van Riebeek got off that boat. And in 1995, the ANC decided to extend it by another 30 years. Today, you speak to me about my heritage. Acknowledge my heritage, man. Acknowledge the fact that my people are dying because of a lack of opportunity and it's systemic. A handful of colors in council, a handful of colors in parliament, a handful of colored ministers, that does not do anything for my people. It is the biggest day of the year. Chief, I understand that you think it's funny. But I also understand you don't understand that you're stupid. 
My people are dying and you think it's a oh, joke. On a point of <laughs> Honorable Adams, um, please take your seat for a moment. Honorable member, why are you rising? Chair, I'm rising on a point of order. Yes. I think the member on the podium is excited. Just, just by smiling, he's addressing me and leaving everything and saying I'm stupid. And I want to appeal that to must withdraw that. Thank you. Yeah, Honorable Adams, um, can you please, say? please moderate your language. Can you say? Um, if the man thinks that the death of the colored no, people is a joke, Adams, if he thinks that the dying of 10 of our sons a day is a joke, I will not retract. Honorable Adams, did you refer to that member as stupid? Chief, he was laughing at my face while Honorable, I was telling you that Honorable, one of our sons died. Honorable twice. Adams, I will not retract. refer to that member as I stupid? will not retract. Honorable Adams, I will not retract. If you're not prepared, you apologize for laughing about the Honorable Adams, Adams, and then I will retract. Honorable Adams, I will give you another opportunity to withdraw. I don't want the opportunity. Okay, then you must leave the podium and the house. Honorable Adams, leave the house, please. My problem with many political leaders is that I don't see, excuse me, a lot of emotions when they speak about issues of um, integrating of African countries, when they speak about African unity, when they speak about apartheid, when they speak, it's like there is no emotion when they stand up to fight for what they believe. And Fidel is one of those guys that don't disappoint. Always, he, when he speaks, he makes you feel how he feels. His feelings are clear. You look at his facial expression, his body language, his attitude. He's a person that will all, you will always know how he, uh, how he feels every time he speaks. Many of these politicians are very apologetic, uh, are very uh, mild, at least, uh, at least they, they can't express themselves the way that Fidel does. And to have another uh, African man, a black man, laughing, to his face, knowing that it will trigger emotions, is very sad. Um, Fidel, what he needs to do to improve his political um, leadership qualities is to learn how to tone down a little bit and address people aggressively without showing, um, without, without ngala. Let me say it like that. Don't be at the position where, listen, if you tell someone that you are stupid and the speaker uh, uh, asks you to withdraw it, it does not change that you said it. <laughs> you understand? You, yeah, you can say, I, yeah, I withdraw calling this stupid as stupid. <laughs> you know, things like that. Just use tactics on, so that you can continue with the message that you, you wanted to, to preach at that specific time and, and place. Because for me, is the message is more important than you giving energy. And for me, you making this person win because they laughed during your 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 what you call uh, your, your delivering of your speech or, or of your address. So for him, he needs to know uh, when people want to tick him off because they know what type of character he is a very emotional uh, politician. So he needs to be careful. But I want to say this to the color people: D is the man. What for yellow betling? Everybody for yellow lichi. He's the earnest man in parliament. What for yellow betling? Can listen? Vote for the man, man. I love this man's energy when he speaks about colored people. Gaten McKenzie has lost this. You don't hear Gaten say anything about colors anymore. Anything, anything. He was excited saying he's going to make spinning a, a national sport. <laughs> The Minister of Sports saying he's going to make uh, spinning cars a national sport. Yeah, it's going to introduce spinning in schools. That's what he said. So for me, it's it's uh, it, for me he changes color, and you will hear later on on this video how Gaten McKenzie is just he's not a politician. He's not a politician. But anyway, let's hear what Brian Mulefe said about this eight billion I'm talking about. Hide nothing from the masses of our people. 
expose lies whenever they are told. Mask no difficulties, mistakes, or failures. Always bear in mind that the people are not fighting for ideas, for the things in anyone's head. They are fighting to win material benefits, to live better and in peace, to see their lives go forward, to guarantee the future of their children. That is what was said by Amelka Cabral. ESCOM has requested for an 8 billion rand clawback from the revenue determination that NERSA had previously approved. This clawback has been approved by NERSA. By doing so, NERSA has acknowledged that its previous estimation of ESCOM revenue is different from the actual outcome of revenue from ESCOM's operations. The accounting profession calls this a budget variance. Statisticians call it an estimation or a prediction error. What we are considering today is whether a prediction error of 8 billion rand is acceptable or not. The Omkonto SZ party's view is that a variance or prediction error of 8 billion rand is not a trivial matter. In fact, it does not qualify to be called an error. It is a fundamental error in estimation. It points to a fundamental flaw in the revenue estimation model of NERSA. More importantly, it points to the fundamental flaw in the operating model. Of ESCOM. We all know that the single biggest expenditure item in ESCOM's books is the cost of primary energy. We also know that the biggest source of energy in South Africa is coal. About 85% of energy comes from coal. By Guys, many of you don't, don't get triggered by this information because Sometimes accounting terms, it, uh, it goes over our heads. You know, the, the people saying there was an 8 billion estimation error. For you guys, you, um, you don't understand that it is quite negative, whether it was a plus error or a minus error. A positive or a negative error. You cannot overestimate or underestimate estimate with 8 billion. It's a, it, it, can't, it can't be an error. How did you do your estimation? What, what led you to have an overestimation or underestimation of, of, of 8 billion? And not 1 point something billion. 8 billion rand. This is how these people are eating. This is how they're eating. And we don't say anything about it because uh, the right names are not, uh, are not, are not put in uh, the right faces are not put into this type of, of errors that were created. If it was during Jacob Zuma's era, it was going to be, be Jacob Zuma's uh, uh, ESCOM. If it, you know, it, it was people were going to be named. Who is making this type of errors? But because now it is the lovey davis of the government of national unit uh, confusing, it's like, it, it, let's understand it was an error. You know, um, a, a, a budget variant that we did. It was, it was just a they just want to terminology as it's just a budget a budget variant that we did um, of about eight billion. Um, um, but yeah, yeah, we, we we are fixing that now. Yeah, man, So I'm happy that the MK has got someone like Brian Mulefe where such things will not fly around. You know, and nobody knows as better than Prime. Nobody knows as better than Prime. So we are happy to have him there to give us some knowledge, and we hope that he will guide Escom into the right direction. Now, you tell me as we are moving on, why a minister with no children will attack Julius Malema? <laughs> Listen to this. The honourable member said that I take my kids to an expensive school. Um, I don't have any children, so I'm not quite sure which school they're going to. Um, but I'm, I'm aware that the the Honorable Malema does, of course, have his children in a private school, and I'm sure they're privately transported oh. as well. 
And um, I'm sure that the, the, the resources that he's diverted there, he can donate to the Treasury and we'll put it into the, into the National Scholar Transport Program. Thank you. Thank you. Let me go to the virtual platform. Is there any hands raised there? You can't say there is any hands raised there. You Thank can't you, see. Uh, you Honorable blind? Malema. You can't see there is a hand being raised there when you say, can I see if there is a hand raised there? You can't see. So I'm, I'm rising on a point of order here, Chair, that this guy must not speak about my children, must speak about me. I went, if he wants to take me on, he must take me on. I went to a public school. I come from a family which has got nothing. I'm not like him from a privileged family. He must stop being a oh, coward. The honorable members, let's listen to the Honorable Malema. He must stop being a coward and fighting children. Don't talk about my children. Talk about me. I can attend to you ideologically, theoretically, physically, and otherwise, including outside. Yeah. I'm not responsible for your father giving birth to a brainless child. Honorable man. Malema. Stupid minister. Thank you. Um, Honorable Malema, I... I, I... Unfortunately, I don't think that's necessarily a point of order. Uh, we we I understand the sentiment, and once again, members, and and this is again a comment in respect of. I'm question saying and that boy sessions. must not talk about my children. That boy must not talk about my children. Thank you, Honourable Malema. He must never go to my children. My children are a no-go yeah. area for racists like you and those racists of the DA. I'm not scared of all of you. Thank Do you, not go to my Malema. children and I've tell no, that boy I've never no to speak you. about my children. Okay. Yeah, you see, the issue with DA um, current ministers is that, number one, they are unexperienced with what they are doing. Um, this one is a, is a bookworm. I think he's qualified to be in the... In the um, in the financial portfolio, but he's not a person that understands politics at all. It's a very low blow to bring someone's children into it. You understand? And I'm not saying that because he's a DA person that did it. Even if Julius does it or whoever does it, for me, it's it's a very low blow. I don't encourage such things. Leave children out of the out of um, the the parliamentarian uh, discussions. Leave the children out. And when I. Um, you are even proud to say you don't have children. Do you want us to tell you why you don't have children? Do you want us to expose you why you don't have children? Because it's very immature to say what you said. I'm not sure if you guys are reading between the lines. But um, don't say things like that. The comebacks uh, to that statement, young man, it will not be nice to you. So don't want us to um, to attack you now and um, uh, you know uh, expose you in, in levels that you don't want to be exposed. Because we can we can do it. We can do it. We just choosing to be parliamentarian and diplomatic. So uh, don't bring children into discussions. Or uh, don't just <laughs> just don't. Not Julius Malema's children. Don't bring anyone's children in any discussions when you are um, fighting that person. Just fight the person directly and leave it alone. Don't. <laughs> yes. I think Nina Yenzo YouTube is suspended. Because Tina so, so, right. <laughs> yeah, okay. Julius Malema also fought with the DA member who was continuously repeating that we are the descendant of of uh, Jan van Rijnbeek. <laughs> For it is only together that Honorable the Block van Schelting up, please just take your seat for a moment. Honorable Malema, why are you rising? It is an offensive language to say we are all descendants or grandchildren of Jan van Rijnbeek, a murderer. We can't be told that we are children or descendants of Jan van Riebeck. Shaka and them were agree. But to mention Jan van Riebeck in the same line with Shaka Zulu, with Queen Mujaji, is an offensive language and it's unacceptable. The Jews will never agree that Hitler must be mentioned in a debate that seeks to identify. We will never agree with that. That we are the Honorable Malema. 
Honorable Malema, that is the moment. Honorable Tlanguini. Chair, I want you to caution the young man. If you're going to continue like that, we can't be, we are not part of a legacy of Jan van Ribier. And he cannot consist, consistently tell us that we are part of Jan yeah. van Ribier. That is offensive Honorable... to all of us Africans. And we cannot allow that and tolerate that. That is precisely that you want to protect still Louis Guetta standing a bit in front of parliament. Oh. We're not going to allow that. Thank you, Honorable Langwini. I've already ruled. With a murderer and a rapist. Please take your seat That's now. Offensive. Please take your seat now. With On this point, what I wanted to do is uh, there are many history books that you can read that were written by African scholars that um, tell a different story from what the British have told about their arrival here and how they got into, um, let's call it, dominance of taking over our country, fighting us by tribe by tribe and getting everything um, the way they managed to um, divide and conquer us. I, I wanted to touch on this because uh, when we talk about the Pan-African School of Economics, Technology and Agriculture, history is one of those uh, subjects that will be wanting to um, revitalize and, and um, make sure that our children know the proper history of Africa, the, the history of during colonization, but also very importantly, our history before colonization, if you know what I'm saying. So, so that when our children defend themselves, they are able to defend themselves factually. Then they are also they they also very informed as to what happened in the past. Very very important. So that's the only thing I wanted to highlight uh, on this point. So um, that's that's it's very important to have our own institution sit down with our children, and um, you know. Um, educate them and some of you um, elders also don't know our history properly so maybe we should do some sermons here on king said so um, one time or two times a month we will do african history and, and the whole of africa history not just south africa tell me if you are interested on that on the comment section uh, let's speak about gate and mckenzie guys why is this guy so excited <laughs> i get it he's most excited my bro here? No, no, I want to ask. You can't have problems in your marriage and then you speak about other people's marriage. Our marriage is intact. We yeah. differ like couples. Order. Oh, Minister, I just please, take please. your seat again, There's please. There's no progress of conquest. Honorable yeah. Minister, please take yeah. your seat for a moment. Sit down. Honorable Member. You should have rotten in jail. Uh, House Chair, I think you have to be fair to all of us. Just like uh, DSG Honorable Mkhalipi said, ministers must answer questions when it's irrelevant and frivolous. Hmm. It must be stopped. Don't subject us to that mediocre called an answer. We are not part of it. Thank you. Divorce and marriages have nothing to do with the initial question. Yeah. What we want is government at work and consistency, not some mediocre answer that we have received here. Thank you. Honorable Minister, um, there's still 37 seconds less. Okay, uh, let me repeat this again. Gaten cannot believe where his popularity and his money has taken him. He can't. From where he comes from, uh, being a criminal from a small age, uh, uh, leaving school and uh, going into gangsterism, being arrested um, for crimes that we don't even want to mention here, and then um, getting out, opening minds, um, uh, in Zimbabwe and all around Africa, making money, becoming a millionaire with, with his crooked friend, uh, Kenny Kunene, uh, opening a political party, 
and um, becoming the president of that political party and ending up in parliament and also not only ending up in parliament but also becoming a minister i don't think he expected this to come in his life you know so sometimes we must understand his um, his level of excitement he's too excited but uh, politics will humble you mm, 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 mm. Uh, one day you're on the top the next day you are kissing the dust. And somebody has to tell Gaten McKenzie to say, remember what you promised your people before um, the elections. How you were so pro-colored, uh, how you were doing everything for colored people. Right now, he's doing nothing. You guys can correct me or if I'm wrong or right on the comment section. But Gaten is no longer the Gaten of, um, of um, old. He's, um, he's a... He's a he's a darling of of uh, Cyril Ramaphosa and the uh, government of national unity. To say that the government of national unity is intact, what are you talking about? Some of the ministers don't attend the signings of bills. Like there's no they, they are attacking each other on 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 social media. What is Gaten talking about? Hi, Maru Gaten, you are disappointed. Yes, but we'll we'll see uh, what he says. Um, and also, you must be careful, Gaten, because nobody uh, promises us to live forever. You must leave a good legacy, Gaten, when you go when you go away. Uh, talking about the legacy, Praveen Godan uh, is no longer with us. I think he will be buried. I think today or something like that. Um, Fikile Mbalula said something that it grabbed my attention in this interview. Just listen to this. Uh, the, the speech you gave today, I just want to start with just broadly. What inspired it? Thank you, brother, and the listeners. Really, what inspired the speech is that uh, let's not say something that is not truthful about uh, PG, because uh, I think in the speech we describe who he was, and uh, we owe it to him uh, for his dedication to the struggle. Uh, we owe it to him uh, to give a fitting tribute uh, to a person who has spent his entire life for the liberation of our people. So we can't be distracted by those who want us to emphasize the negative. Otherwise, the negative is outweighed by the positive. I mean, South Africans. Now, guys, let me tell you something about the good outweighing the bad. There's no such thing in, in, uh, in life. You can be good your whole life up until you are 50 years old. At 50 years old, you steal money. You are involved in a corruption, corruption scandal. You rape. You kill. People will remember you for that. Now, Praveen's legacy is destroying the state uh, institutions. We will always remember him for killing SAA. We will always remember him. There's no question about that. Transnet, uh, everything that uh, Praveen has done was for the determinant of the African people. He was never pro-African. They can try. Listen, you can't force people to remember Praveen the way you, you want to project a lie to people. And I said, let's leave this Praveen guy to rest in peace. But these guys, every uh, memorial service, everything, they are lying. They are lying. Look at what the people are saying about Praveen. But the problem with the ANC is that the ANC does not listen to the people. That, uh, does not listen. Forget it. None of us are going to live forever, uh, uh, Babum Dan. None of us. You will be remembered for the things that you are doing right now. You will be remembered as the worst Secretary General of the ANC, the Secretary General that, uh, that, um, that uh, ruled over um, the most divided ANC. The same with our President. You will be remembered. That's why he's trying to fix by signing this uh, government, uh, well, national uh, NHI. Uh, signing the Bella Bill, you know, he's trying to get some type of positives so that when he's long and gone, um, people can say, okay, but at least he did one, two, three. There is no at least with Praveen. There's, there's nothing he did that we can say um, uh, at least about, you know. And uh, 
The problem with the ANC is that it's rotten from inside. Um, Fiki Nambaluna actually protected Dada Morero and attacked another member. But what he said about the ANC in this next clip that I'm going to play you sums up how the ANC is for me. You know, I go to Johannesburg region, as I conclude, and I'm going to charge that comrade. I go to a meeting. I say to the comrades, this is a meeting of the NWC, of the NC. Nobody must take videos here and do what you did to Dada. Because whatever Dada said there, it was not meant for public consumption. He was talking to his comrades in a little bam video rise. When they finish video rising him, they take it out. ANC people. Because they wanted this mayor to be dealt with very fast and probably to be put aside. But they are not aware they are damaging the NDR. They are not damaging Dada. Dada, we can deal with him, put him aside. But the ANC will now be negotiating with Rabatlamapodi, South Wagana, or Kai Kai, with everybody. Kanti, when he has presented his political overview in the meeting, you, comrades in the meeting, must say, Chairperson, we don't agree with your view. And don't even go out here and repeat that thing. It's your view. When they leave the Likhuta, the table is like President Ramaphosa going to the Likhuta and we video rising. And then the whole country. You know, they didn't video rise us like that, but it did happen. Me, Mduntuli, and the president in a virtual meeting of the ANC were recorded. You see, comrades, the levels of uh, ill discipline in the ANC are beyond question. So the, this is exactly how the, the ANC is. You don't know who to trust anymore. You guys remember how Natin Tleko's uh, voice notes were leaked, how Zizi Kota's voice notes were leaked, how Lindy was soon like. There's always someone leaking some types of uh, some type of information from confidential WhatsApp groups and private uh, discussions to the public, selling even that information uh, to media so that it can be exposed as breaking news. This is what is happening behind closed doors, and this will never stop in the ANC, unfortunately, because it has now become a culture that when people speak, people are recording. He's saying himself, he asked, don't record what is happening. They recorded Dada Morero suggesting to um, employ our African brothers and they exposed him. Someone who disagreed with this issue exposed it as if Dada was going to uh, be the final decision maker according to the suggestion he was making. Not having the maturity to discipline Dada and say, listen, what you're saying is wrong. We're not uh, employing any Nigerians, any nobodies here in South Africa, we're keeping it here. We rather learn the languages here. We rather pay someone to teach us the languages here than than employing those people. This is a state security you're talking about. But now, ANC guys, they always leak information. So you have to be careful when you talk because you don't know where is that information going to end. In the EFF, in the MK, in the DA, or in the public domain. You don't know what is going to happen. So it's sad to hear what is happening there in the ANC. Um, it's rotting from within. You guys will tell me if I'm right or wrong. Last but not least, uh, I want to touch this thing what Nklamulonjela addressed in parliament also. It's also just, uh, I think, one, one or two weeks old of a clip where he's addressing the abuse of drugs, especially in the Western Cape. Honorable Speaker, I rise on behalf of the MK Party and the people of South Africa to present a notice of motion for the National Assembly to discuss the urgent need for a comprehensive strategy to combat escalating drug issue in the country, particularly as it affects the youth in both our townships and suburbs. Among the nine provinces, and in the last three months, the highest drug use has been in the Western Cape at 7.1%, administered by the DA, and killing our youth. Now, this discussion, Chairperson, should, amongst others, focus on the six key issues 
the devastating impact of drug use on young people's lives, families, and communities, the increasing prevalence of drug-related crime and violence, the need for enhanced law enforcement efforts to target drug syndicates and traffickers, the importance of improving access to rehabilitation support services and effective youth, the development of preventative programs in schools, communities to address root causes of drug use and abuse, and the collaboration between government, civil society, local communities, to create a holistic approach to eradicate drug abuse. Let's start with the Western Cape. I so move. The ear Guys, you are very blessed if in your family you don't have an alcohol problem. You are blessed if in your family you don't have a weed um, dacha problem. You are very blessed if in your family you don't have a soft and hard drugs problem. You are very blessed if your brother or your sister is not addicted to some type of substance that is locking their life uh, from even thinking or even taking a bath or even taking care of them uh, and they turn into mini criminals uh, for survival to feed the, this craving of um, getting their next fix. You are very blessed. You are very blessed. Most of us in our families, we've got a brother. We've got a sister, we've got an uncle, we've got a mother, we've got a father who alcohol is controlling their lives. And for small children, it starts with the soft um, um, soft drugs like cigarettes and dacha, and then it gradually graduates to other things. Because once you smoke a cigarette, chances of smoking a, a, a joint is very easy and once you smoke a joint and you know what is the limits and i'm not talking about those people who are uh, in religiously um, you know our rastafarian brothers are doing that they, they never note those ones i don't know why nina man because let's be every day but they are so well behaved huh they are so they are so well behaved what he, 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 at least not where I stay from, where I stay. They were very well behaved. But I am truly sango. You are just, it's just messing you up. You know, so the Western Cape, um, you know, in the colored area, because of lack of opportunities, before, because of lack of role models in the town, in the townships and so on, um, the uh, gangsterism and drugs that that life is glamorized in in, in the la in the eyes of our brothers young brothers and in the youth of this country rather let me say that you know so the mk did not need to raise this point for me it shows that they care about the youth and that's what i wanted to say it shows because people are just sitting there in parliament they don't care about anything but for them to say listen let's look into this thing of fighting uh, this uh, substance abuse here in south africa especially in the western cape a province where the da is failing the people failing the people high crime rates high unemployment and, um, and high uh, drug abuse uh, you know it's crazy there in the western cape and for him to to be concerned about the western cape for me i applaud the mk for that you guys will tell me um what do you think about that? Anyway, guys, we are still on our road to building the, the Pan-African School of Economics, Technology and Agriculture. I want to applaud you guys because for the one week where I was not on YouTube, a full one week where I was not on YouTube, you guys did not stop donating to Pacenta. That gave me so much. It, it boosted me every time I saw that notification of 50 rand 100 rand 200 rand. it boosted my spirit so much you don't understand we are fighting i told you guys we are this close to securing our land uh, very soon we'll be making our 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 announcement and and, and we are planning a, a grand event on that land uh, invite, inviting big celebrities doing a fundraiser uh, for the school so thank you so much for each and everyone who has taken their hard earned money huh. To say, us as African people, we want to unite behind a common goal and build a pan-African school that is focused on an Africanized curriculum.
very nice i really appreciate you guys let's let's focus on history let's focus on economics let's fo focus on technology and of course not forgetting agriculture because when a pandemic hits when serious things happen in life the only people that will be taken serious is people who can supply food Ah, that you can you have a TikTok account and a YouTube account with that is suspended or not suspended. Nobody will care about that. People will be going to those who can feed people, and we want to teach that to the next coming generation today. Be self-sufficient. Be independent from the market around you. Be independent from white monopoly capitalists. Produce your own. Make your own technology. Like make. Like, let's develop pharmaceutical industry of African people. You understand what I'm saying? So thank you so much for everyone that has donated, guys. Continue uh, to, to, to plant your seed on Baseta because the tree, when it grows, is going to bear fruit for the coming generations to eat and become healthy with knowledge that is. Until we meet again, don't forget to pray. After you pray, stand up, African child. Do your best so that God can do the rest. Peace in pan-Africanism. I salute.